Hello, are we going to work this time? I already tried going live once and Facebook kicked me out. So let's just make sure this gets up and running and that we have everybody that we need. All right, so far so good. As all you guys know, I love Facebook so much. Um, there's every time I go on to do a video, a live, a class, something, something goes wrong. So looks like we're 20 seconds into it. I'm just going to wait for a bunch of people to kind of pop on. And as we start getting everybody, I will start talking. We have a lot in attendance for this class tonight, or I guess this webinar seminar. So I want to make sure enough people are joining in. I know we were having technical difficulties, so everybody's asking where we are. I'm going to respond to a couple people here while everybody's getting logged in. How about this cooler weather? I am completely obsessed. Even though I love summer, I absolutely love fall. My favorite season for sure. So this weather has just got me super, super excited. All right. More people are getting on. Cool, cool. You are super welcome, Michelle. Let me tell you, six o'clock hit and I finally got done working at the Woodstock office doing the functional medicine all day. And I yawned on the way out and I was so tired and I had to pick up my second wind. And I'm like, all right, I got a class in two hours. I got to go home, get everybody situated and get this completely prepared. So um, I worked hard getting um, my outline figured out for everything that we're going to talk about tonight. The biggest things that I kind of put together were questions that I was getting from um, everybody in the office. And there's just so many questions and there's so many things to go over. And I'm not going to probably get to them all on the live. And you guys are going to have probably more questions and that's absolutely fine. I ask that you comment in the, in the comment section. If it's not me or another mom or someone who has the information, they will get back to you on it. I'm going to do my best to answer the questions as we go as best as I can. Um, I do not know any of the current um, district policies. So if anybody's going to ask on certain districts, I do not have that information. I do not know anything about mass exemptions. I do not know anything about guidelines. I don't know anything about rules and regulations with schools. So if we can refrain from those questions, then we should be able just to move on um, just as smooth as we could. So I'm gonna start with just some of the basics. Um, let's just make sure that I can go back, toggle back and forth here. So the biggest things that I just want people to know is Illinois does have um, homeschool laws. I got all my stuff from the Illinois um, School Board of Education and just also my mom brain. So for those that don't know, I have a four and a six year old and we do homeschool and we've homeschooled from the beginning. So yes, we're early in our um, career with homeschooling, but we've been doing it. And so our kids don't go to public school and we don't have to worry about that um, for this year. So I do feel for all of you who are going through that transition and having to pull your kids out of school, I feel for the children that are getting pulled out of the school. I feel for people that are having to send their kids to school and they don't want to. And then the people that want to send your kids to school, good for you. Like this is this is a non-judgment zone. Like you are, there is no things here. If we're okay with sending our kids to school, great. If we're wanting to pull our kids from school, great. I support you in every which way and people that come to our office know that we 100% support you 100% of the time. So um, again, I took everything from the Illinois School Board of Education, just going over the basics. Um, do I foresee all the homeschooling laws changing in Illinois? Probably, but as of right now, we're gonna go off of what we know and we're gonna hope that everything stays that way and that we're not gonna have any issues um, as we start this school year. So, um, I have three pages, so everybody bear with me. I'm going to do my best to cover what I can. So the biggest question I always get asked is, uh, is there homeschooling requirements in Illinois? And what do I have to follow as a parent? So the answer is yes and no. So the Illinois is very vague on what they require. And the biggest thing that they require are subjects to be carried through and how many days you must complete in a year. So the biggest advice I give to parents is finding a teacher agenda um, or a homeschooling whatever calendar or something that you use just for schooling just so you can keep track um, i recommend curriculums only because then you have something to look back on so if someone did try to say oh 
Johnny's homeschooled and we don't think they're doing what they're doing or try to report anybody or try to do anything. You guys have what you need to prove to whoever um, because we know that's the world we live in. And you have that to say, yes, no, we are following what we need to do based on Illinois guidelines. So you must provide um, subjects in language arts, mathematics, um, biological and physical science, social science or social studies, fine arts, and then PE. So uh, again, 180 school days a year. Um, you know, I would say every day, even if we did not get to our curriculum, and that's realistic in our house at least, um, both working parents, we do our best, but there's just some days that we have dentist appointments or we're going to the chiropractor and we're going and doing treats or we're doing activities or whatever the case may be. So there's days that we do not get to a curriculum every day. Does that mean that we're not schooling? No, these kids consistently learn every day outside of the book, right? So we would, we would term that more like unschooling or for us as homeschooling parents, we just say it's just an everyday life. But throughout that day, if it's not recognizing a letter on a sign or if it's not putting you know, things together and trying to do math, you're still learning. And so it's, even though it's play and you're not following a curriculum, it's, it's, it's hard for us to wrap our head around. But the more you get used to it, the more you realize that we're still just playing and we're learning at the same time. So um, we, we kept track of everything that we needed to do. We kept track of, of our curriculum. And then towards the end of the year, I realized I had about 20 lessons left in our main textbook and uh, we did not finish it. And I didn't want to finish it at that point. I knew that, you know, we were both just checked out. There was a lot going on at that time. So we went all the way to the end. I had her do the review page. She rocked it awesome and it just reassured me and reassured her like we got this we know what we're doing um my biggest fear is starting homeschooling was that i wasn't going to teach her um, my oldest is my daughter so her is the reference i have and she's my six-year-old she's going to be seven in september my biggest fear was that she was going to be the only one not knowing how to read and this kid can read and we taught her to read and she knows how to read and she may not like to read and we may have to push her to read but she knows how to do it. And to me as a, as a homeschooling parent, that was like our first biggest challenge and we succeeded and we rocked it. So reassurance to you guys, you can do this. I promise you, there's tons of resources. There's tons of moms, there's tons of curriculums to help you. And then we're here to help you when you need that as well. All right, I'm just looking to make sure I don't have any things I need to answer, okay. So the, the big, another second topic is people ask, well, does Illinois make you follow a certain curriculum or do they provide you with re resources, recommendations, materials? In short answer, it's no. They do not provide you with any materials or workbooks or certain things to follow if you're homeschooling. That is all up to you. They do have an entire list of curriculums and things you can follow. A few of my favorites, we use the good and the beautiful. Uh, we've been through several different curriculums. We've done ones that you've had to print and put in binders. We've done ones out of different workbooks. We've done um, 180 day, excuse me, science, history, um, math. We've done several different things. We've done kind of the um, unschooling route of doing flashcards and just more like play for like the preschool route. But for us in our particular situation, uh, I'm a working mom, obviously. And up until just a few months ago, my husband was working as well. So now he's home and we're blessed to have that. But it was between me, my husband, my mother-in-law, and my mom. And everybody was, it was picking up on a different day and schooling our children. So I needed something that literally I could finish the one day, they could pick up the next and know exactly where to, to end off and where to start. So the Good and the Beautiful is amazing at that. Easy Peasy Online is 100% free. So for those that have financial situations, 100% free, it is all on the computer. But my point being is that there's options. So there's just because, you know, there's people that get free schooling in public schools or they qualify for X, Y, and Z. There's still those qualifications and things that we can follow um, for people that are home as well and that need that financial option. So just know that too. Um, there's different routes for homeschooling, right? So there's a Becca, which is a little bit more challenging and advanced. There's Charlotte Mason, which I do like and follow a lot of more like child led. Um, and then there's curriculums that are completely nature based like Blossom and Root. So it all depends on where you are. And literally, if you were to go on a homeschooling page, for instance, Illinois homeschooling, McHenry County homeschool happenings, uh, whatever, homeschooling throughout the nation, whatever group you're in, if you were to post what's your favorite curriculum, you will literally get hundreds of responses 
And I guarantee you 90% of them will not be the same. So when I first started posting that stuff a few years ago, I was so overwhelmed. And then I contacted my small group of people and I said, hey, ladies, let's meet up. I want to look at all your curriculums. I want to see what you use. I want to see what I like as a parent. And so then I was able to see everything up close and personal. So I encourage all of you guys to do that as well so that you guys can see exactly what you like and what you don't like and where you can substitute. So for instance, some people love the good and the beautiful for uh, your basic curriculum, but then they like horizons for math or whatever the case may be. So you have wiggle room. You don't have to stick to one thing as long as you're covering the subjects that you need. The good and the beautiful doesn't um, push history till about second grade unless you have an older sibling. So we're, we don't do a curriculum for first grade. We basically just talk about basic things, what's going on in the world, um, what's going on in the past. We, we do educational videos. We pick up books at the library, whatever the case may be. So you can be smart and proactive with it. You, we do a lot of um, holiday-based stuff. So whatever's going on for that month. So if it's not St. Patrick's Day, if it's not whatever Memorial Day, 4th of July, and we kind of just give a history based on that, do some crafts and activities based on that type of stuff. And these kids think it's the best thing ever. Um, and I'm blessed to have uh, my mother-in-law, who's a retired teacher. So she does a lot of the arts and crafts and hands-on stuff. So it keeps the kids pretty occupied. And there's a lot of good things, too. Um, Michael's online, um, the store Michael's, has a human body guide. And it is amazing. So literally, it's a life-size human body. Um, and it's a sticker that, um, that goes on the wall. And it has all the organs in the body. And then it has um, all the bones, too. So basic science stuff and you're able to to pinpoint it and these kids can really learn so it doesn't have to be as complicated but that's one of the you know the joys of being able to do your own thing at home is there an application or registration process that may be um, start that may that has to be completed before you start homeschooling this is one thing that i really wanted to touch on which is why it's in the beginning of this video so the answer is no i know a lot of parents have been receiving um, letters home from school or the registration forms for the state and they've been filling them out and sending them back in and they don't know better and so it's a learn more do better and that's a hundred percent fine you guys this is a hundred percent voluntary it states right on there you do not have to fill this out and send this in do not fill it out and send it in they don't need to know what you're doing they don't need to know um, what child's staying home why you're staying home give them as little information as possible as of right now, we do not have to register our children in the state of Illinois for schooling. Let's pray it stays that way, but it's Illinois, so let's be serious. But in the end, right now, everybody just do your thing. The only thing you're going to have to do, if your child is currently attending public school, there is a procedure that you do have to follow. And some people choose to not follow this, but this is why I encourage it. So you can write them a letter, you can do a formal withdrawal from school. You don't have to have it notarized. You don't have to have it done legally by an attorney or anything like that. But a failure to do so could also initiate a truancy officer to come to your home. So if you didn't send Johnny to school in the fall, which I think most people had to have their decisions in by like five o'clock yesterday or something like that. But if you chose not to send Johnny to school and they're expecting him to be there in August or September and he doesn't show up, and he doesn't show up for several days, they're going to initiate a well child visit to your home from a truancy officer to be sure why isn't Johnny in school and what is going on. Don't get people to come to your house. Don't get people to call you. Stay under the radar. Do what you're supposed to do. Fill out the letter. Get it sent to school. Tell them that you're withdrawing your child from school and you've chose to homeschool. That's it. Date it. Put it in your file. Put it in your records. Done. That is it. Um, I always say for like parents that are divorced or separated, whatever your laws and whatever your, your courts have determined, fine, but I do encourage both parents to sign it just so nobody can kind of go back on the other one in terms of, oh, well, I wanted them to go to school, but mom didn't want to go them to school or whatever the case may be. All right. Checking questions again. All right. So far, so good. Private school is considered homeschooling. That is actually in the bylaws in Illinois. So we are considered um, a private school. That is how it is written. So for someone that made that comment. All right. Let's see here. 
So another question a lot of parents ask me, and I've been taking notes over the last uh, several weeks as parents are coming into my office. People ask, well, in school, they have to do standardized, te standardized testing. A lot of parents exempt their kids out of standardized, te standardized testing in school. Do you have to still do standardized tests at home? The answer is no, you don't. Um, if you choose to administer tests for like progress, like later on into high school, like SATs and ACTs and all that stuff, sure, fine. There's a whole nother section on that. But in a short answer, no, you do not need to do academic testing or grade passing in school um, for the state of Illinois. Let's just say you guys decide to keep your kid home from school this year. Next year, everything changes. You want to put your child back into school um, and you're comfortable with that. Are you able to do so? And the answer is yes. If you decide to re-enroll your, your student or your child in public school, um, after homeschooling, the only issue is the school makes the determination of grade placement. So let's say you pull Johnny out this year, he's third grade, and next year he'll be fourth grade. So you do third grade at home, but maybe things came up. It was harder than you thought. Johnny didn't progress how you wanted him to. And then fourth grade comes and you want to put him back, but he doesn't do well for fourth grade. They have that to be like, hey, no, he needs to be placed in third grade. So is this to scare you? No. Um, and honestly, I don't know anybody that's done that, so I can't speak on behalf of that. But again, this is what is stated in the laws, which means that they can follow it. So they do recommend you to keep in close communication with the district if you do plan on potentially re-enrolling your child, just so you guys can stay up on task of, hey, you know, this year is really a lot for us. I'm really struggling for sending Johnny back. We're going to homeschool him this year. It's a potential that we may re-enroll him next year. Can I keep in touch with you guys throughout the year? Make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do. I want to make him the most successful as possible. If you guys make this about the child, they're not going to hold it over your head. If you make it about you, then they may. And do they have the right to? No, but it's just reality. So I always say make it about the child. State that, you know, you guys just do not, you want him to be so successful, her to be so successful, and you want to make sure you're following that. So again, that would just be if you guys plan on re-enrolling your child. If you don't know what you're going to do and maybe three years, four years down the road, you're going to enroll them for high school, don't worry about it right now. This would be I get just for people that are like, hey, we're going to stay home this year, but we know if this lets up or if things change, we're going to for sure re-enroll next year. I would just keep that, you know, on the radar. You do not need to submit your um, child's work to the public school or the Illinois State Board of Education. Again, nothing is required. The only times you would need to do that is if you get written up or reported and you're being told that you know you're not following requirements they may pop in they can accuse you of not meeting requirements and you would have to show them that you're meeting requirements and that your child's progressing again i've known no one for that to happen i think that they're probably pretty distracted by this um, terrible virus with covid that they probably don't have time to do that but your guess is as good as mine they, they may so again just stay underneath the radar um, the second situation would be if you're enrolling your child in public school, you need to demonstrate the academic level, which we already talked about. Um, and then sometimes even just for high school. So it may be good to keep that record only for colleges and universities. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But if you're like moving your child around or if they're going to be close to graduation or they're going to start taking college classes early, you're going to want to do some transcripts. You're going to want to do some record keeping. There's plenty of transcript um, templates and free websites and everything to help you online to get there. So it's not super hard. And I think that's my biggest fear still to this day. I mean, I only have the four and six year old, but I'm so afraid that I'm not going to be able to like, oh my gosh, are they going to graduate? Are they going to be able to be successful? Are they going to be able to go to college and do what they want to do? Am I going to be able to do enough for them? So we all fear that, but we know that as parents, we teach them better than anybody else teaches them. So we have to maintain the confidence and know that we're teaching them how to be not only amazing people, but strong people, strong-willed people, um, and we're doing the best that we can. Uh, so people have asked me, well, I'm going to keep my child home this year for senior year. Like they don't want to go back. There's just too much going on, but they're, you know, we want to send them to college next year. Do they, are they going to be able to take SATs and ACTs at public schools? The answer is no, they cannot go and take those diagnostic tool, um, uh, tool testing at school. But it's what they can do is there's the, on the state site, there's resources of places that you can go. Um, and they can also go to places that are not contracted with the state. So private and like religious schools. 
So you can always contract with them if they're more independent standing and they're not getting that funding. You can contact and potentially sign up there to do their testing and or you can do it on your own through places. There's places that do them within like um, uh, March and April and you can do them at standing standalone centers and they're on the weekends or whatever the case is. But you can also try to contact private and religious type schools as well um, to see if they can get that done. Just checking questions again. Yeah, high school, and it depends. Like if you're gonna enroll them for, for high school, the, the transcripts and the grades 100%. For the more like this younger population, like in our situation, I haven't been there yet. So I'm just going off of the laws for that stuff. The parent does not have to have certain requirements to homeschool, 100% no. Accredited homeschooling pro programs are better and they are easier to transition into. But again, you're not gonna have an issue. If you homeschool and you need to transition your child back in, they may do super simple placement tests just to make sure. If you have an IEP and you pull your child out of school and you need to put them back into school, they have to redo their IEP. They cannot pick, off where, pick up where they left off. Um, so keep that in mind too. Now, if you have an IEP and you're going to homeschooling, well, you're on your own, unfortunately, unless you can try to utilize resources throughout the community, but I would not hold your breath on that one. There is plenty of co-ops within McHenry County. Um, there's a homeschooling, uh, McHenry homeschool happenings. There's an Illinois homeschooling. There's, I think, a Kane County homeschooling happenings. So there's plenty of options for that. All righty. Yeah, and I'm getting everything that I basically have from the Illinois site so that no one can say, oh, she told us wrong. <laughs> yes, if you are withdrawing your child at all from school, you have to do a withdrawal letter. Do not allow the school and the truancy officer to come to your home. Withdrawal and that's it. You can keep in touch with the school otherwise and tell them that you may be enrolling them next year, but 100% you need to do a withdrawal. Is there financial assistance available to the cost of homeschooling? I kind of already covered this and the answer is no. The state of Illinois does not provide any assistance for parents seeking to homeschool and there's no organizations that I'm aware of at least that can help you with that, but again there's plenty of free curriculums and there's plenty of moms that would totally help you if you guys needed resources for that. So just keep that in mind. Um, there is a regional office of education that you guys can contact if you need help with homeschooling. But again, maybe it's just me personally and I feel like that we've just dealt with so much junk over the years with our children and, and reporting and all this stuff. You're better off contacting a local mom group. You're better off contacting a local neighbor, a friend, someone from church, someone that you know is homeschooling so that you guys can talk to them. I don't really recommend contacting anybody um, of a higher authority through the state to help you guys, guide you guys through homeschooling, as bad as that sounds. Some of them are great, I bet, but it just, again, just opens up a can of worms sometimes. The local libraries are amazing. I know, um, I think it's, I'm gonna, sorry if this isn't your name, I think it's Kathy. Oh, I could be wrong. I think it was Johnsburg Public Library. Um, she's a great homeschooling resource. There's plenty of places locally. I know Richmond Library, I think Algonquin Library, I think Huntley, um, Marengo, um, I think Woodstock, all of them have certain activities and things that they're offering for homeschooling groups. So just, again, check it out. Look out there. You'd be surprised. There's more than you actually think. Our kids have participated in library activities. There's plenty of gymnastics places, gym activities, play places all these things that offer homeschooling deals and discounts. So there's many things out there and we've participated in this stuff for years. We still do, uh, we do Valentine's Day parties. We did St. Patrick's Day party until COVID canceled it actually. So we still have to make that up next year, friends. Uh, we did pumpkin patch in the fall. We went apple picking, we, we did it all. So there's so many things you can still do uh, as a homeschooling parent. So your child's not gonna be left out on that type of stuff. And these kids become classmates, they become friends. It's the same people and they're awesome people. So don't be afraid of that. 
Uh, in Illinois, if you chose to have your child attend school part time and be homeschooling part time, they do have to allow it. The thing is, you have to the request has to be made by May 1st of the, the previous year. So with everything being done this year, I'm not sure how much they're going to be set to the May 1st. They may allow everybody to still do that, even though it wasn't May 1st. If you're just now making that decision and you're like, OK, well, I have to work a couple days and but I want to homeschool the others or whatever the case may be. That is still allowed in Illinois, so you guys would have to contact your schools individually for that. OK, uh, there has to be enough space available in the school for your child to go back and forth. You have to be located in the district that your child lives in for um, you have to be located in the district where your school is, where your child lives for them to be able to participate in that school. Um, and the courses have to be a part of the regular curriculum, so they will kind of just guide you based on what they're doing so that your child would be able to go back and forth. <clears throat> Sorry, just checking everything here. Christy, I know that you have a lot of comments. I'm really going based off of the last several years, what I've heard from parents. I actually had a parent withdraw last year and they had truancy officers show up at their home because they did not have a letter of withdrawal. It may not say that you need a letter of withdrawal, but if you don't and then you get put on the red flag burner because you didn't do that, we just try to avoid that and we encourage everybody just to follow stay underneath the radar i'm not necessarily a hundred percent rule follower as everybody knows i uh, probably shouldn't admit that but um i definitely like am one who wants to stay underneath the radar i don't want any issues for for parents let me tell you me as a primary i'm the first one that gets the calls from the schools i'm the first one that gets the call from the state from dcfs and asks me all these questions so i'm one to just want to back you up stay underneath the radar and everybody follow what we're supposed to um your child can do driver's ed in the state of Illinois, even though they are homeschooled. So that is a law that require that is uh, that, that requires the school districts teaching grades nine through twelve to provide classroom courses and the driving portion of driver's ed. The student is eligible under the conditions set forth in the school code, and that was just directly written from the one question. So you have to notify the public school district by April first of that year to state that your homeschool um, child wishes to take driver's ed courses the next school year. So if you don't want to do that and you want to do a private course, so be it. But um, otherwise, you can notify them. They can be a part of the public school system for that. A lot of people are asking, well, if my child's homeschooled, but they want to play sports, which is a whole nother ball game. Don't get me started on that right now. The answer in a nutshell is no, they cannot participate in sports in schools if they're homeschooled. Now, there's a couple exceptions to that, like extracurricular activities and intra like scholastic activities, different type of like intramural sports. Certain schools will allow you to do that. Other schools will not. So something you would have to participate in, for instance, there is certain exceptions. So if a child is wanting to play band or wanting to participate in the band at a local school, they would have to attend band practice after school if that was a part of the course. So if they wanted to do that, they had to participate in the entire thing, let them know, enroll. But certain sports like ones that would quite require practices through different types of activities like football and basketball are usually not um, not allowed, but you would need to with, um, communicate that with your school first to determine if that was something that they would allow you to do. Never hurts to ask, but they definitely can tell you no. That's all. All right, sorry, I made a lot of notes on these end questions here. We've already answered some of this about um, receiving special education services at school, and now you're gonna be entering homeschooling. And the biggest thing is just knowing that um, under federal law, the districts are only required to send a portion of their federal special education funds on students with disabilities in private schools. So certain schools can share certain things when it comes to that, but then other schools, as soon as the finances and the funding is done, it's done and that's it. So public schools, students with disabilities and private schools, homeschooling are not entitled to an IEP, which we kind of already discussed. And there's many, many IEP coaches on there. Nicole Schlechter is one of them. I'm not sure if she's on here and she probably is somewhere out of the 150 people. But um, great resources, great people, people that can help you, people that are used to this, people that are struggling at home as well. So 
reach out, you know, post in local groups, say whatever, you know, hey, I have a kid who had an IEP and I don't know how we're going to go forth with this or I just need help with this. Ask. People are here to help you. We want you to be successful. No one wants you to fail. I promise you that. All righty. This was another big question this year. So everybody says, well, if they're graduating eighth grade or they're graduating senior year, are they entitled to receive an eighth or 12th grade diploma from their public school or take part in the graduation program? What do you think the answer is? No. Um, the student is being homeschooled. They have no legal right to participate in public school graduation ceremonies or receive a diploma. The student must be enrolled full time at a public district and satisfy all graduation requirements to eligible to participate in graduation ceremonies and receive a diploma. Let me tell you, yes, it's a big time in their life. If this is something you guys choose to homeschool, then you also choose to not participate in that graduation, right? So I would say make it the best, do your thing. If your child, here, here I'll, I'll say this. A lot of my patients are homeschooled. I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of kids and a lot of parents. I have never had a kid who has been through middle school, high school, graduated high school, into college, who has been homeschooled. And I ask them, did you ever regret it? Did you ever wish you went to school? Did you ever wish that? Did you wish that you didn't stay home? I have never had anybody that said no. They all loved being homeschooled. No one ever wished to go back the other way. You guys can do it, I promise you. If this is something that you choose and you feel is right for your family and you show your child this can be fun and this can be good and that they're learning and they're doing really well, they're going to be great, I promise you that. Just maintain the confidence. They're not gonna care about a graduation at that point. Our goal, my goal, your goal, whatever the case may be, would be throughout that high school to start taking college courses and really just be up to par and just get on top of the game, okay? If the child return, wants to return back to 12th grade and graduate, they can do that. So you would have to show it like um, someone had mentioned about like showing like accreditation and showing transcripts and showing court credits for your classes. They would have to prove all that stuff, get into the 12th grade through the entire 12th grade, then they could graduate with their class, okay, or class. So a lot of people say, well, how do I know they're really ready? Or I, we did an entire year of curriculum and we don't think they're ready to move on. So a lot of the homeschooling curriculums have placement tests. And while you can take them in with a grain of salt, it gives you a good guidance as to where you need to be. So for instance, on the good and the beautiful, there's a math placement, there's a, um, like a language arts placement, and you can really see what curriculum you need to start with. And I found it really helpful. And they tell you, if your child, maybe there's five steps, if your child only completes three of the five, they're not ready. If they complete four or above, they're ready to move on. So a lot of that stuff is really legit. And if you try to push your child up because you think they're ready and they're not ready, you know, we're not making ourselves heroes here. This is about them. And that's why we homeschool is to be able to go at their own pace and be able to figure out what we need to do. If your child's in second grade and they're reading at a fifth grade level, you can do fifth grade reading. But if your third grader is doing second grade math, then you can do second grade math. That is the joy about homeschooling, allowing your child to be successful and set up for the best opportunity that they can and not comparing them to other students in their class, not everybody learning on the same page, not everybody being told that, okay, well, Johnny's not sitting well in class and I think he needs medication or I think he needs help when truly he doesn't get it and he feels left out and his way to regress is to misbehave because he does not get the material and he's not getting the help he needs. That is the joy of homeschooling, is to be able to determine that and make everything in the way that you need to for your child. So I have felt that being like the most empowerment part is watching your children grow and watching them make it to the next step and know that you did it and knowing that they did it. And it's a breath of fresh air and literally, I, we, we do random stuff throughout the summer. We don't teach throughout the summer mainly because I need the mental break. My husband needs the mental break. My kids need the mental break, truly. And, um, you know, every time I'm like, okay, let's grab a book. You know, my daughter, I, she, God bless her soul, but she does not read for fun. And she'll be like, well, it's not school time yet. School doesn't start for, you know, another couple of weeks. I'm like, but we still have to do this stuff. So uh, sometimes we have to really push our kids to do stuff and, you know, make it as fun as we can. I remember when we first started learning how to read, she'd get so frustrated that she couldn't read and she couldn't figure it out. So I found this amazing game. I got a bunch of sight words and I laminated them 
and I put them on the floor and I bought fly swatters and I would say who, what, that, whatever it was, are, or, and she would have to hit it with the fly swatter. She thought it was so much fun to be able to find those sight words and hit them along the way. And she knew exactly what that was. And it was letter recognition. It was, you know, it was cognitive thinking. It was reading. It was doing everything. And she didn't even realize she was doing it. Now, if I would have sat in front of her and been like, let's sit here and let's be boring and let's do all these flashcards, she would have been completely turned off. She would have been messing around. She would have been flicking at stuff. She would have been looking all over the place and it would have been a, a whole nightmare. But for the fact that we made it interactive and that she had fun with it, she was engaged. Pinterest, God bless its soul, because that is a lifesaver for many of us parents. And for us, you know, it just, we're, we work and it, we don't have time. There's some creative parents out there and some parents tell me they do some amazing things. And um, I always tell them like, that's awesome. I, I truly wish, can I just drop my kids off for a day? Can I see what they can do with you? And I just love that. I love that creative nature, but not everybody has that. And not everybody is a teacher and it's okay. You can get through it without teaching. What's nice about my curriculum is I could drop my kids off to you tomorrow and say, hey, they're just on the next page tomorrow. And you guys could walk through it with them and you could figure it out. That is why I like following that type of stuff. Um, but everybody's different and you have to go with what's right for your child. And that's the good thing. There's no right or wrong way. Um, the good and the beautiful, Sandra, that's a nice place that you can do placement tests, but it goes based off of their curriculum, so I'm not sure. Yeah, there is a game on Amazon, and I made it for free, but it wasn't about that. The fly swatter game was so much fun, though, and my kids still love it to this day. Now, granted, they get a little carried away, and they'll start hitting each other with the fly swatters. Don't get me wrong. Um, they're no angels by any means, but um, that's that's kind of the fun part is just to let them do whatever. Survival of the fittest, right? All right. Let's see. A lot of interaction on here. Good job, guys. Super love my tribe. You guys are amazing. All right. How do colleges evaluate the work of a student whose high school diploma was received through a private homeschool? They have certain policies and procedures. And so I don't have access to that. And I'm not sure if anybody else did either. But they have certain policies and admittance um, regulations for those who are coming from homeschooling. So again, it's just making sure I highly recommend people at least getting into high school to do a homeschooling portfolio to include like any tests that your child's taking of over the overview of the curriculum you've used with samples of assignments um, completed by the students, tests, quizzes, written work, whatever, um, a progress report for the child. So if you're gonna do it by semester, if you're gonna do it by quarter, but that's really important for them just to kind of see that progress and make sure that you're following whatever you need to in your credit, your credits and your accreditation. And then um, for high school, um, homeschooler is a detailed transcript. So if you guys like just made a binder and you just made that portfolio for them, they're going to have that option to be able to, you know, show that to colleges and show that to universities. A lot of the local colleges will help you with that. So if you guys were to go to MCC or um, I don't know, was it Lake County College or wherever all these places are. But if you guys were to go to the local colleges, you guys could easily ask them for criteria needed for homeschoolers. And you can just tell them you have a child that, you know, it's going to be getting into his last year of school or whatnot and wants to go to MCC, they'll give you the resources. They're there to help you with that. That is what those um, counselors are there for. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask them that type of stuff so that you guys make sure that you have everything for sure. <clears throat> Just checking notes. All right. All right, so it seems like a lot of it's just commentary. Okay, so what's everyone doing for PE? I saw some things on here. So some of the suggestions were obviously biking and riding and walking and doing all sorts of fun stuff. So, I mean, literally just get out. Even if it's cold outside, even if it is winter, we are still outside. We are wrapped up. 
in whatever garb we have. We live in the Midwest, people. We can still go outside. Our kids' immune systems need to be outside. I don't care if it's 20 minutes and it's below zero. It is okay. They're going to survive. So you put them outside. You let them play and run around. They're going to be sweating by the time they come in and all that snow gear. That's PE, okay? So you, you don't have to be, you know, super hard and structured for that type of stuff. But you can do, um, you can set up like an obstacle course. So you can literally write out, if you're looking for more like your middle school or write out, okay, you have to do a, a cycle. So 10 push-ups, 10 sit-ups, 10 jumping jacks, and then a jump rope. That's what they do in middle school. They're playing, they're doing more cycling. So you can literally just cycle with them. You can find different things to mix it up. I believe in getting them active every day. Um, I know that certain people are not like that and that's fine, but you know, a lot of the schools now are doing like PE, like three days a week. Well, and if we go into this school year, I don't even know if they're doing gym. I don't know if they're um, even doing recess anymore, which is unfortunate, but there's plenty of resources online. There's plenty of YouTube videos. There's plenty of things you guys can check out. Oh, someone just said PE with Joe on YouTube. So there you go. There's plenty of things your child can interact with. Um, there's plenty of things on on Amazon or Fire Stick or Prime too. So if you wanted to hand them to follow something, if your child's one that needs to follow somebody, do something versus just make it up on their own, then do that. Or you can say, hey, what would you like to do for gym today? Do you want to play basketball? Do you want to do an obstacle course? Do you just want me to give you some things to do and you do them for 10 minutes? Get your child engaged. Let them help you decide that because they're going to help guide you. And that's what keeps them um, required. Yeah, see, masks are required for PE. So how many kids is it going to take to pass out before they decide that masks are not required for PE? Huh? Uh, anyways, kindergarten. So Joanna, I would highly suggest looking on Pinterest and literally writing like kindergarten requirements or kindergarten recommendations. The things that are going to come up are going to be um, letter sounds, letter recognition, uppercase and lowercase, making sure that they can identify those types of things. That, that's the recognition part. And then the, the sounds. So um, some kids really struggle with the sounds of letters. So if you're not able to help them, there's a lot of resources like LeapFrog has a letter factory that's absolutely amazing that really keeps these kids engaged and it teaches them how to recognize their letters and sound them out. So there's that type of stuff, being able to write their name, being able to know their address, knowing phone numbers, knowing their parents' information, um, and then starting to read. So just kind of putting words together and being able to help with that. If you follow a curriculum, which I highly, highly recommend, then you're going to be able to guide to know exactly what you need to do. Oh, yeah, yoga is so fun. There's Sweet Feet Yoga and Crystal Lake. They do a lot of virtual yoga stuff, too. So some kids really like that which is so fun. All right. A lot of comments. Good job, guys. I love this. Yeah, I mean, we have so many homeschooled kids in the practice, so many. Um, we hit over 2,000 patients this week, so awesome, awesome stuff. Um, just, um, what's today, Thursday? Just yesterday alone, we had 11 new families come into the office, which is just absolutely fabulous. So, uh, a lot of homeschoolers, a lot of parents that are really just on top of it and really wanting to learn more um, and do the best thing for their children. And so many kids are excited. They're excited to be homeschooled. They're excited to have their own say in their education and have their own say as a child. Because so many children are being misled or they're not being given choices. Um, you know, as parents, we have to work these days and most families have to be two income households. So for us parents that, you know, you, you work and you provide whatever you have to do, a lot of these kids were then turning back and, and regressing because they're in um, school for, you know, six, seven, eight hours a day, sometimes before school programs, sometimes after school programs. And then they're kind of just, you know, going home, doing a little bit with the families and going to bed. So now we're going to have so many options for people to be able to spend more time with kids. And, and I really just appreciate that. And then for those that are doing school and for our teachers out there, I mean, God bless all of you. You guys are amazing. Uh, a lot of the teachers have not been given a lot of credit. And let me tell you, I had a teacher who came in yesterday with her family and she doesn't have any ideas of what she's doing for her classroom this year. 
And she doesn't know how she's going to provide a curriculum for her kids in her classroom because based on the restrictions that they're being given. So not only are these, these teachers just as stressed as we are, but they're doing their best and they're not being given the information like we think they are. And they're not the ones in the decision making. A lot of them found out the requirements and the restrictions the same day you guys did. So I give all of them the most credit as possible. It's going to be so hard for them to try to figure out remote learning and try to help these kids as much as they can, because that is truly their goal is to make sure that our kids are are doing a great job. Um, and we do have some really awesome teachers out there. So I do appreciate all of you guys as well. All right, I'll leave this open for a couple minutes just for you guys to answer any other questions. Lauren, we would love to have you. I know we've spoken in the past. So any, any last minute questions anybody has? There's a delay with this video, so I'm gonna let it go a couple, couple seconds. Well, if you guys think of anything, please, please let me know. I will do my best to find out for you. Um, I know a lot of people are asking me about mask requirements and mask exemptions, and you guys know that I'm all here for you. Um, and so we're going to do our best to just get through this year, and we're going to do our best to stay sane and stay true to who we are and stay confident as who we are. And we are going to be doing a uh, immune system, um, like natural medicine cabinet class in August. So we're going to be able to prepare you guys just for this upcoming year. I do feel a lot of these kids have been pretty restricted and I feel like their immune systems are going to be really challenged regardless if we kept them home or we're sending them to school or whatever we decide. So I'm going to help you guys with that. So stay tuned for that stuff. Um, know that, you know, patients at the office, you guys can call, you can email. We have lots of different things that we can help you with and we will go from there. Uh, real quick, Sandra, we do do, we follow the good and the beautiful in our home and we do take holiday breaks. I have not heard of gather round. We do buy the programs from the good and the beautiful. I love them. You want me to show you? I have a couple of them here. I have them sitting next to me. Let me show you. Let's see. So they send you like an entire activity box. So this is the math activity box for what is this? Grades one and two, I think. So they have stuff in here for like an entire workbook. They have like a like a tape measure that they're gonna start to learn how to do that type of stuff. They have dominoes, they have different um, activity sets, they have clocks, and then they have an entire game instruction and a ton of different cards and workbooks. So they're consistently keeping them act, um, active based on what's going on, and that lasts for two years. This is the handwriting book for grade one. So it's just really like writing letters, you guys can kind of see that. Just handwriting and tracing and just making sure that their penmanship is good. So just your basic handwriting stuff for there. What's this one? Oh, here, here's a good one. So my son feels left out a lot. And so he's four and I know a lot of people say, oh, play, play, play. Well, again, we're not home all the time. So I need to have you know people do stuff with him and some people are not as creative. So I did get the preschool curriculum this year and I'm very, very glad I did. So a lot of it's just tracing and being able to have him like completely just interact with everything. And he's good. He's so excited. He's so excited for his books. And so these are just more like just the preschool doodling and they really just keep up with that. I've used four weeks to read. It's an awesome book. Awesome book. They have like a level one reader. So in the curriculum, it breaks it down. Um, the good and the beautiful will be back in stock. This was not all in stock when I bought this uh, or when I started, I had to buy it in pieces and they promised they were gonna have everything back in stock. Just keep watching the site. I promise you, it'll be back. So this is a reader. So your curriculum kind of tells you which, which stories to read throughout the session, which is nice. I bought this as an addition. So this is a nature notebook. 
So it starts in the fall and it goes all the way through the spring and it talks about the senses and it talks about trees and flower facts and flower studies. Um, spring bingo, so for them to find different things and find or draw the items as they see them. Seasons, snow, animals and insects in the winter. I mean, it, it's fun stuff. It really just keeps them nice and engaged. Scavenger hunts, leaf anatomy and all sorts of fun stuff. So pretty cool things. Well, this was the language art. So this is the, the course book for first grade. I can kind of show you a little bit. Some of it's going to be hard to follow, but um, so if you were to start, I'll show you like lesson one so you can see they have a bunch of different like spelling words and things. So it gives you like an overview of different things that you're going to do. So it gives you spelling words, some supplies that you need, some basic um, major phonics and grammar principles for that section. And then as you get through it, it does like it so it's working on like consonant blends and it's working on putting things together so they're learning more your grammar part of like consonants and vowels and being able to identify all of that so what i liked about it is again i'm not a teacher i wouldn't think to know to, to cover certain things so i need something all up front for me and then for like our science and our basic stuff we're doing a safety um safety unit so it covers uh, fire safety, water and electricity, earthquakes and natural disasters, God gave me to my body, um, home alone, kitchen and cooking safety, internet and peer pressure, and then gun safety. So this is what we decided to do for more of our basic science unit. We did a lot of science stuff last year, so we learned about electricity and we learned about lights and we learned about the sun and the reflections and all sorts of stuff. But this year I wanted to have it more interactive for uh, both my kids to kind of follow and and that lesson can be do, done from it's a kindergarten through eighth grade so you can reuse it re you can review it you can do whatever you needed to do for that um but it's super fun so that's what we use that's all what we have for this year we have a lot of activity stuff so for like math or flashcards. i mean our homeschooling room is literally insane uh, my husband wants me to put it in the basement because there's just so much stuff um we do piano we're in girl scouts we play with friends. We are normal people. And those that know me, everybody's like, wow, you homeschool. It's like, yeah, I do. And um, I'm blessed to now this year, my husband will be home. But before we had two separate sitters that were at the house and they literally just alternated on what days they were coming and they did the schooling for the kids. Schooling does not take long. Check out the post I made a few days ago, guys. Literally, we spent an hour, hour and a half, maybe, uh, schooling a day. So some people wake up super early and they do it at 7 a.m. Some people do it in the evening. I will say for a parent, is me as a parent and my children, if it didn't get done during the day and I tried to do it when I got home or in the evening, kids were checked out and they were not having it at all. So again, there's, there's a time and a place and some parents, that's their only options. Your child will get used to it as long as you be consistent. Consistency, consistency is key. If we don't do the same thing every morning, they get off track. So they are, they know that we wake up and they come downstairs and we do breakfast or whatever the case is, and then it's school. And if they don't do school right away, it doesn't get done. If we wait till the afternoon, it does not get done. And there was a lot of days like that. So one part to kind of just keep in mind. Let's see. The good and the beautiful is freaking amazing. I'm super obsessed. No, so the, the science on the good and the beautiful, you'll see there's there's hundreds, not hundreds, okay. There's dozens of different things you can choose from. And we have noticed that we do better just going to the library and focusing on a science lesson than following a curriculum. We've been doing this for a couple of years. Some parents still need that. If you need a good science curriculum, the 180 days of science is really good and it can go based off of grade. This is just what we chose to focus on for this part of it and just to do some basics. But then we are going to focus more on like the bioscience. Um, for, this is more like the physical science in terms of learning just your basics for life. These kids need to know this stuff. It's our jobs as parents to teach them that stuff. They go over this stuff in school. So we need to make sure that we're kind of just covering so that they do know. But then we do focus, like I said, on um, the nature lesson is going to be a lot of science. So that's going to be the outside. That's going to be the dirt, the snow, the fall, the spring, the flowers, et cetera. 
So that's going to be what we're going to substitute a lot of our science stuff for. All right, so some of these questions are pretty repetitive. You guys can refer back to the posts I made in the beginning of the week with the how many hours that you guys should spend on schooling. <clears throat> Wild and free has been mentioned already, which is kind of neat. Hope to check out that one. All right. All right, well, I am done. Um, it has been an hour and I'm tired and we've had a long day. So if you guys think of anything else, let me know. You guys can keep up the open discussion in the comments. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to reference back to this. This video is going to stay up. It's not going to go anywhere. So those that are just turning in, those that missed it, 100% fine. Um, and if you guys need anything, let me know. But I promise you, stay confident, stay well. You're going to do great. Your child's going to thrive. They're going to do amazing. I have no doubts. Uh, if you guys need anything else, holler out. Have a good night. Bye-bye.